Oh, Bri, Whispering Pines. Doesn't sound like necessarily we want to have a motocross track, but look at this place. Beautiful facility, brand new for the 2002 Extreme Sports Series Canadian Motocross Championships. Travers Coster staging for the first 125 moto of the day. You just saw Brad Hexeth. He's got that number one plate on his bike for a reason. Both moto wins last week in Nanaimo. Brian, set up the track, set up the facility. Well, it's a sand-based track, so the guys are going to love that. They'll be able to get on the gas nice and early here, unlike Nanaimo, where you had to really be gingerly uh, applying the throttle. Here, you can get on it early. The bike, oh, it's going to bite. It's going to be aggressive racing. Corners are starting to shape up some new lines as this track gets rougher, which it will, being a sand base. You're going to see more and more line choices become available. And by the second motos, it's the guys that are spending the time in the gym that we're going to see on the podium. Let's talk about the differences from last week's track to this week's track. We've already talked about how rough it's going to go. How are these four strokes, which were way up last week, going to handle this uh, type of terrain? It's a little more of an equalizer in the sand. Those four strokes do pull great off the start. We've seen hole shots, you know, Tiger Lacey last weekend, two for two. The hole shot's important too on this track because there's some tight corners which really kind of bunch things up. It's going to separate the skill levels though as it gets rougher. Uh, to answer your question though, these 125 two strokes are tuned to the max. Really not going to make a huge difference. It's the torque band on those, two, on those four strokes that help them. But you know what? Rider, rider, rider. Hey. Who knows? That's what it's all about. Okay, catastrophe yesterday for the Richmond Racing Team. Darcy Lance crashes in practice. He's hurt. I don't think he's going to be racing today. He won't be racing today. I just uh, spent some time with him. He has uh, a cracked and a crushed vertebrae. That kid's tough as nails. A devastating blow to Canadian motocross uh, in general. I know the competitors are out here all gunning for Darcy. Went 1-1 last weekend. So, you know, they don't want to win by default. These guys are tough. They really care about the competitors. They want to beat Darcy fair and square. No question. He said he might be back for next week, but uh, we'll see what happens this week uh, in the off week uh, before we get to Calgary. Quickly, let's go to Ryan Gold. He's going to update the track for us. He's in the whoops right now. The first thing I noticed this morning when I was riding with the helmet cam is this place is going to get super rough. But not the usual rough we see at the sand tracks. Not the deep bomb holes. It's going to get real choppy because there's a lot of heavy braking coming into the turns. Now, speaking of the turns, a lot of the turns here are real tight. So you're going to see inside lines and outside lines developing, which should make for some real good passing. The other thing, practice this morning was awesome. The traction was mint. It's going to make for some great racing. One of the toughest sections on this track is this whoop section here. Now, it's not because they're big. It's how inconsistent they are. The dirt is soft, so what happens is these laneways develop. And if you get out of one of these laneways, you cross out, you're going to hit the dirt. That's why you got to get in these whoops and just ride the rail. All right, let's get reacquainted with our points chase. Castro leaderboard, 125 class, one of four rounds. Hanks and then Lacey up front. Bogart and Holland in the middle, and Mini rounding out the top ten as we move into the 250 class. Lands with a clean sweep up front. Wall looking good in third. Hanks at then sixth, I like that. DeHaan in eighth, and Mesley holding the forward in ninth. Double moto winner in Nanaimo, Darcy Lange, a devastating blow for yourself and your whole team. A crash in practice has left the sideline today. Yeah, you know, I just come up short on a, on a triple jump and uh, spit me over the bars and the bike come hit me in the back and uh, ended up uh, crushing a vertebrae and it's cracked too, so, you know, it's, doctor didn't, doctors didn't seem too, too worried about it. I guess it, I hurt the best one I could have and, uh, you know, he said the only thing I can heal at this time, so hopefully we can come back next weekend and uh, be better. 125 West champ Brad Hagsat went to two moto victories last weekend in Nanaimo. Yeah, it was a, it was a good weekend for me. We, uh... We had the bikes working good, uh, Pacific Yamaha, my mechanic Ed Gardner, everything was just working right for us and and uh, we got good starts and things just went away, you know, and we're, we're hoping we can keep that rolling, but um, you know, we're just kind of taking it one race at a time and, and uh, not getting too excited. The time to do battle has come. Tiger Lacey working the boys through staging. First 125 moto coming up. Nineteen-year-old Tiger Lacey, Wolf Creek, Oregon native, two hole shots last weekend in Nanaimo. How's that for a young man's confidence? Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, I love my bike. My 250Fs are awesome, and I feel real confident on that starting pad in Nanaimo. No, my bike's pretty much stock. All I got is the pipe on it. My suspension's done, and uh, just an ignition on it. Pretty much stock, though. What do you think of this Kamloops circuit? Is it a Tiger Lacey track? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think it's a pretty good track. A lot of guys are saying it's tight, but I like it. All right, Brian, the riders are on the line. First 125 moto here from the loops. Good shot of Hagseth. Look at that Brad McLean getting ready. There's Dangerous Gone. He goes 30 to 5. 
Riders are focusing down on the gate, waiting for a drop, and the gate is coming down into that tight left hander. Brian, who's going to get the shot? Well, it looks like a nice clean start so far. Perry Yamaha is up there. It looks oh, like Brian, some carnage off the top, off to the side into the hay bales. Looks like 115. Darren Cripps got some problems. Look at this Tiger Lacey with another hole shot. Hanks up in second place. That's two Yamahas. Looks like a Kawasaki. That's Holland in third. Yeah, Rusty on clean 41. Tucker Hibber gets a great start. He's been fast all year. Really impressed me. Uh, Last weekend, let's talk about the Yamahas, the four strokes again, hole shotting Lacey. He's got that bike dialed in. He's just got the start. He, he's got the timing. He's got the bike. He's got the lightweight. We got a hand set. Look at this melee here shaping up between Holland and uh, Hibbert. We talked about the differences between the four stroke and the two stroke on this track right now, Brian. Look at this. Four strokes up front. Hags it on the inside. Takes care of Lacey right in his grill early. Look at this, Lacey's going to have to follow the line, see what happens. Nice line over that uh, camel back there for Lacey. Shaping up to be a good race. Hagseth gets his job done early in the lead. May put a little more pressure on him. This is a gnarly, gnarly whoop section, as Goldie showed us. Hasn't quite run it up yet. Yes. And Holland takes Tiger for second place, coming into the sand. Goldie talked about getting into that whoops and tracking through on the same line. That's exactly what Holland did. And God, Holland just dumped it over in the bars. Head over heels. Lacey is down. Hibbert is down. Huge quack right over here, Brian. Unbelievable. Rusty goes down and causes all kinds of turmoil in the top uh, group there. That's second, third, and fourth place down. Going to get hacks at a huge lead. All right, Brad, the sand section has already taken some prisoners. Looks like Sutherland was in the mix there as well as Madsen. Now, Hank said this way out in front on that 254 stroke. Lacey having a problem getting that four banger going. Looks like he's trying to build up a little compression there, Brian. Yeah, the really finicky start as compared to a two stroke. Now we've got the battle for second with Aaron Barr and Dusty Clatt, both really hot up in covers from the West Coast. I can't believe how fast Aaron Barr has been in this 125 West Series already, showing some real stuff. Look at this, Joey Sutherland back on the gas gets by Taylor on the inside. Joey also a bright star. There's so many young kids uh, from Western Canada that are really making a presence known this year. As Clack betters Bar in that rough whip section. That whip section is going to be something to look at all day long. Clack with a nice line. Look at this. Fasciati down in the works. This track is doing it. Yeah, he's a 14-year-old prodigy. He's a... Uh, Probably the next big thing out of Canada. 14 years old, running pro. Gotta like it. He'll pick up. Now look at this. Holland's coming back up. He's got Barr and uh, Hibbert in his sights. Hibbert gets by Barr on the outside. That same line that Clyde got by him. So that puts uh, Hibbert into third place. Barr into fourth. Holland into fifth. Here's Hagseth again, all alone in first place. He's got like about 25, 30 second lead. He's having the uh, ride of his life here. Just taking it easy, doing everything right. His mechanics are telling him what to do. And now, Holland whoa, whoa, getting squirrely off the camel back. Look at this Holland on the inside. Bar hanging it out wide. Great line for Holland. You know what, Brian? A track like this, it's really tight, and it gets rough. You've got to pick good lines. Holland picked a great line there. I'll tell you, I love the way Rusty makes his passes. He's so aggressive. And a lot of times, you can see him kind of glance over. Look at the shot of, of him right there. Just a beautiful shot. In third place, back to Clatt in second. Another smooth line. Look at this. The Suzuki Hibbert has gone down, Brian. He's got his bike down right in front of the Suzuki sign. He's got the problem. That is a fast, fast part of the track, man. He has got to be hurting. Look at his back. It's, oh, he's not happy. And his bike is littered right out in the middle of the track. Hopefully no one else will uh, collect that. So Clatt on the last lap flag in second place. Here comes number one Brad Hags on this final approach. And he takes a checkered flag on a very bizarre moto. First winner here at Cavaliers. Brad Hags has another amazing moto for you. You just dominated out there today. Tell us what happened. Um, I got a good start. I think I was second or so, and, and I got around Lacey early. Um, my wife said she could the apples running great out there, and, and uh, I got around him early, and then something happened. All of a sudden, I had a big lead, so I've got four motos today, so I'm kind of, you know, I backed it down a little bit and just rode conservative and took my win, and Dusty Clatt rode a great ride. He was right there the whole time, and my RG3 MBR, uh, Renthal Yamaha was working great out there. Running down the Castro 125 leaderboard, we've got Hagsef, of course, but how about Holland coming back? Clatt, great job. Brad McLean rounds up the top 10 on his Pacific Gamble. Dusty, two weeks in a row, awesome riding. That finished second place in the first 25 motor. You gotta be stoked on that. Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a really good moto, you know. Too bad that Rusty and them fell, but you know, it's good for me because get up there and just try to take it a bit easier, but I know I got, didn't get off the greatest start. I was about, I don't know, 15th or so, but just worked my way and it was a good race. Can you elaborate on your moto? You uh, kind of got in a little contact with Tiger Lacey. You want to fill us in on what happened? 
Yeah, I got about a third or fourth place start, and uh, I was running pretty strong, and Hagseth got by Lacey, and I knew uh, I had to make my move quick uh, to go with Hagseth if I wanted to run that pace the whole moto. I didn't want to let him on my side, so uh, I, I got by Lacey uh, through the whoops, I believe, and uh, you know I was just starting to make my push to get back up to Hagseth, and man, I went down in the sand section pretty hard. Lacey ran into me, uh, knocked the air out of me pretty good, and in that sand section, once you commit to a line, you're, you're in that line, so he had nowhere to go, ran right in the back of me, and uh, it's too bad for him he can get that uh, YZF 250 started again. All right, Diablo's Dougie D with a little game preparation as we get ready for the first 250 moto here from the loops. Hey, race fans, don't forget about CMRCRacing.com for up-to-the-minute race results. Here's a good shot of the boys on the line. A couple guys doing that front suspension adjustment there, Brian. Yeah, they lock down the front forks to keep the front end low for the start. As soon as they apply the front brake, it releases his catch. As Dangerous Dog ends and goes to five. Gate is down huge, huge straightaway coming in that left-hander, Brian. Let's see what happens. Lockhart out in front again. Look at that. We got Dubé in the mix. Another Honda I saw in there. Look at that Justin Gold. Look at that Dougie DeHaan. Why? And Huska. Oh, that's a Honda five-pack. Great start zone for Lockhart and Dubé all year. Factory Phil Lawrence there. Down in the start. Look at this. Those bikes look like they're locked together. Dan Rounding with a problem as well. So Dubé now out in front. Looks like DeHaan is in second place. Okay. And Wah has gotten by Lockhart for third. Wow. Lockhart gets dumped the fourth within the first, you know, five corners. Again, the whoops causing problems. Oh, Wah's off the track. He just went right into the tires. Let's see if he gets back on. Still maintains second place. No, third place. So DeHaan in second. Wah in third. Huska in fourth place. Oh, Justin Huska. Right. Awesome. You see Wah go wide there. Good thing the track's very wide. That's good for the guys to drift around. There's Lockhart. He's under the hot seat yet again. Okay, so it looks like he got by Huska. So Huska's in the mix still, though. This guy's a fast young Canadian, only riding in the West right now. This kid, I like this kid. Yeah, he's really fast. He has lots of support. Uh, he's pretty much a privateer. He hasn't been riding much, you know. He's working. So uh, I don't know what kind of shape Justin's in, but he does have the skills. Track getting rough now in that tight switchback section. Looks like Treadwell's in the mix. He's going to get by Huska. Huska with a nice inside line. Looks like Wall was trying to find his place there with the DeHaan. Yeah, there's certain things out. No one wants to really commit to a dangerous move this early in the race. There's so no great shot of Morgan. He's outside of the top 20. He got a dismal start. Dismal start, but you know when things get tight there, Bryce, sometimes you have to hang back. A guy like Morgan can make up spots all over the place. Okay, Salty Jr. and Treadwell coming in. Nice line for Treadwell. Pair of four bangers again. Great line for Ryan Lockhart. This guy's got to get on the gas and stay on it, Brian, if he wants to maintain his position in the top 10. Really encouraging for him holding tough with Iron Mike as we see Dubé now in first place being stalked by JSR. Brian, line choices. You see that uh, left-hander in there. Dubé goes inside, Waddles on the high side. Always having to crisscross. You follow a guy and he stalls or misses a gear. You're in trouble. Look at Lockhart. Grabs the tear off. A big moment. This could be Trenwell's time to pounce. That kid has got so much stamina to hang on to that bike. You just, what do you do, Brian? You just hang on and let it happen. Pretty much. You're hanging on for your dear life. <laughs> just using everything you can. A bit of luck, a bit of skill there. Running's on the wall. Treadwell gets past Lockhart. Shot at number 18, Doug Gahan, who looks to be in third right now. So Wall must have gotten by him. Look at this four pack. We've got Treadwell, Hagseth, Smale, and Lockhart. Hagseth seems to be the aggressor. Just past Lockhart, getting a great drive on Treadwell. Around the outside, Sean. He's not afraid of Iron Mike. Dubé still up in front. Look how rutted this uh, track's starting to get. Very dicey through there, brother. Not getting on the gas hard enough. What a style for Wah. See him come out of that. Adjust his position, throttle setting. He's in stalking mode now. Dubé's out front. Back to the rhythm section. Looks like Treadwell and Hagseth are still going at it. Lockhart and Smell right behind it. Twin positions for Hagseth. Look at this. Hagseth on the inside through the Garnet corner. Treadwell goes wide. Does he have them? No way, Hagseth's holding tight in there, right? What a great race. That's all I can say. Look at Dubé now. He's got Juan his heels, but Dubé, he's, he can really take the pressure. It seems when the pressure's high, he rises to the occasion. Well, look at this. Hagseth gets, he dumps his bike. He's got a problem. So Pedersen catches up to him. Wow, teammates now side by side. I don't know what's going to happen. Look, they didn't lose much ground, though, Hagseth. He's still got this pack in front of him in sight as the KTM teammates now roll around. Three four strokes making that right-hander. Looks like Pedersen again. 
Tag sets, and now Holmans and Mesley up in the mix. Those two are battling just outside of the top ten. Looks like Wads made up a lot of ground on Dubé. A reminder, Dubé's on that big four-stroke 450 with Wall on the two-stroke 250. That's right, Brian. A little heavier on a bike, but a lot smoother throttle response. You see the way Wad just massages that throttle. I love the way he rides. Uh, he's a master uh, any track condition the guy can ride. He's proved that. As we've got another man, this corner has been just gobbling up, guys. That looks like Machines Mesley. The FMF sand corner takes another prisoner as Mesley's having a hard time getting his bike up on that steep angle as we get back to the leaders. Wah has gotten by Dubé in the park stand of the whoops. Smooth line through those whips for Wah. Probably got by in that grass keyhole section. Yeah, Wah sneaks through. Dubé on the big four. Pity. It's designed to be lightweight like a 250. But it's got so much motor, whereas the open bike KTMs, they feel like a big bike. That 450 Honda feels like a little bike with this huge motor. Burns the guys out towards the end of the race. As Hagseth and Iron Mike still duking it out. This is great. Hagseth got back into that battle after he put the bike down. Here's Doug DeHaan in third. Let's go trackside with Galdi. Teddy, your boy Dougie is on the gas. Last week he rode great. This week he's definitely stepping it up. What did you guys do this week to change? Uh, we just trained really hard and uh, did a little bit of ride. And, uh, he, was, he had a bit of luck in the first motor. We went down and uh, he was hoping to do really good. And we got a really good start here. And uh, we were just hoping to hold on to it and put it all together. Got to love the teamwork between DeHaan and Chatterson. Chatterson, at 20 years of age, is a certified motorcycle mechanic. You got to like that. That kid's done a lot of hard work. And there's his boy there drifting through the woods, getting a little squirrely. We've got our man, Goldie, down there with Waz Mechanic. Andrew, I see on the board that Waz got a six second lead. I uh, just moved past Dubé. He's riding awesome. Has he got enough to hold on to the end? Oh, I think so. Our uh, Honda Canada Blackfoot uh, four racing bikes are working awesome. We have just nailed the setup for this track today. So, you know, everything goes good. It should be uh, fine to the end. Great team, McLean and Waz. We're back with Morgan as he's getting into that sand section. He's made it all up on Pedersen. Does he go outside on Pedersen? No, he crosses over inside. Pedersen gets a handful of throttle and maintains position. That's a tough part of the track, Brian. Yeah, these two are duking it out hard. There goes Morgan with the advantage on the inside. We'll see. He's got him. Morgan has come back from 27th place all the way up to 6th. This is incredible. Well, an excellent rider like Morgan chooses good lines, and I love the way he brushed Pedersen wide and took that inside line. Now Morgan moving up on Treadwell and Holman through the whoops. Brian, those whoops are so difficult. They're not huge like Goldie talked about it, but they're just all over the place. Yeah, they're really starting to get gnarled out now uh, as we wind down the second moto. It's only going to get more and more brutal as the day goes on. Dougie DeHaan all alone in third place. He's got to be stoked. Coming back from a dismal year last year ago. Broke his jaw the whole nine yards as we've got Morgan now making life miserable for Holmans. Oh, he's made it all up on Holmans for sure. Let's see the line choice. Holmans, is he going to stay inside? Holmans goes inside, but Morgan goes outside, squares it off, and grabs a handful of bottle. Why, that guy knows how to take care of business. you got to love Morgan. He always gets on the gas so early. When you see him make a pass, there's roost coming out of his back tire, usually a yard before the guy's passing. That guy has got it down. As the pair of Americans duking it out there in the sand section, great shot of Morgan. Now, just watch this. Uh, he had that corner dialed all day. He was making up so much time there. He was the only guy actually jumping through that corner. Of course, we're winding down, so he's a little less aggressive than earlier on as Waugh just styles into the checkers. John Sebastian Waugh taking the first 250 moto here from the loops. Here with Marco Dubé. Marco, you got off to a great start. Got the lead early. Uh, Waugh got by you. What happened? Uh, you know, like you said, I get all shot, and uh, I think it's very important in that track. It's kind of tight a little bit and, you know, uh, rough. Uh, I don't know, I get tight a little bit, and uh, I guess GSR was stronger than me, and I uh, just tried to keep keep up with him, but the, he was too fast. But, uh, you know, I kept my energy for the next moto, and uh, I'll do my best to, to win the next one. Well, Castro's leaderboard for the 250 has won. Dubé Dahan is the big story, but you got to love Morgan from 27th to 5th. Hagseth does well, and Derek Fitcher, the young speedster, rounds up the top ten. Now, Doug DeHaan, a fabulous ride for you. You're on the podium. There was a question off the top about the four strokes in the sand, yet uh, you seem to handle this track marvelously. Quickly, I'm going to go to that outside key section. You went down twice in practice, yet uh, it worked for you today. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I felt like I was riding uh, at a decent pace anyways. You know, I made that one mistake right at the beginning there and lost the front end, which uh, cost me a little bit. But, uh, you know, it feels good just to be back up on the podium again. It's been a while, so... With 100 degree heat, Wad declines his interview. Stay tuned for Freestyle Motocross coming up. To my FMF, feel the power as Dangerous goes to the 30 board. There they are, Brian. The riders are on the line. 
There's Hagset. Beside him is Clatt over his number 73, Aaron Barr. Gate goes down. This is a long, long drag strip. These guys are getting about fourth gear here. Oh, Carr is on the top right. Who is that? Periyamas. I think Hagset was down in that mix. There's riders going down all over the place. Looks, looks like Lacey as well. Well, Mini with the whole shot's got Aaron Barr all over him as they duke it out. A bunch of Yamahas in there. How about 551? That's Lindbergh from Alaska. All right, let's pick up a replay of that start and see what happens. Yeah, we can detail here. we got to see Hagset with a great jump. There's Lacey on the inside. Mini comes flying from the outside. Tags Hagset's front wheel. And then Tiger just comes in and scoops them right up. They're both down. I think Hagset could have survived the mini tap, but then Tiger just totally cleared them out. I'm surprised that that's the first crash off the start because it's so fast coming to that left-hander. All right, back to the action. Looks like Hibbert and Holland are in the mix as they come into the sand section. Hibbert gets a little squirrely. Holland on the inside. Hibbert goes around and makes the pass. Hibbert has a big swat. Still makes the pass around the outside of Rusty. Now they're both pressuring Brad McLean. It seems Holland and, and Hibbert run into each other moto in, moto out. Those are both lightning fast riders. One Cowie, one Suzuki. On the FMF tabletop, back to the whoops. We've got Lloyd. We've got Dunn. Looks like uh, Hibbert's getting in the mix. Now look at this. Brad Hags at the start of power through. Did not take him long to get back in the mix, Brad. What a charge. And, you know, it's good for him to pass these guys early in the race while they're still bunched up. Now another shot of our leader, Todd Mini, feet off the pegs. He's giving it his all on that board. Todd Mini right in the rail. So look at this. Aaron Barr coming up on the outside. Mini and Barr going head-to-head -head here as they come into this left hander. Great line for Mini. He looked like he brushed Barr a little wide. Mini's checking back, seeing where Aaron Barr is. Great to see these three guys leading a national race. That's right, Lindbergh on the 551. He's from Alaska. He's in third place. Again on the Yamaha. These guys are, I can't believe it. Todd Mini gets the whole shot. Now he's leading. That's what you got to do, though. You got to get over front. Barr on the inside with a great line. Crushes Mini wide and makes the pass and takes the lead. You know what? Barr looked just like John Sebastian Waugh there. He had the crouch that was very reminiscent of Waugh. Flat with a terrible start. He's in 17th. He's mired way in the backpack. As we get back to the Whoops of Parts Canada Whoops, the Hags have, but look at this. Lindbergh gets by Mini. Now Hibbert's moving up by Mini. I tell you what, a young guy like this, he's got to have to work on his defense, Brian. Well, the best defense is a good offense, so we'll see if, if uh, Mini can get his lap times down a bit. Hibbert now making a charge on Lindbergh. Interesting story with Lindbergh. Had his bikes and trailers stolen just days before the event. He's on a borrow two stroke YZ125 and mixing it up in the top three. Hibbert got him on the inside, same place that he got Brad McLean as we're back to that switchback section. Great lines for Tucker Hibbert. You're right, that guy is very aggressive. He carries well from the snowcross riding onto the motocross bike. I love the way he rides. Sure does. An odd place to reach for that tear off there. As Aaron Barr leads his first national ever Riverside Yamaha into these gnarly woods. You can see them start to groove out. Oh, and look at Hibbert right off the track. Hibbert's getting squirrely. Lindbergh on the inside makes the pass. Let's see what happens. Look at that Tucker Hibbert. Even through the sand section, he's on it. Lindbergh, though, maintaining his line on the inside. He's swapping. Hibbert goes outside in the FMF corner and makes the pass on Lindbergh. Hibbert can pass anywhere in this track. Well, he seems extremely good in that deep sand. He's been the fastest guy through that FMF corner. But look now, Hagseth really charging through. I believe he's taking Mini for four. Boy, Hexen has made up a lot of ground because he was way back after that crash in the first corner. So once again, Aaron Barr in first place. Hibbert in second, Lindberner in third. Look at Hanks up this now in fourth place. He's made it all up on the leaders. Look at how nasty those wheels are. Can't stretch that enough. You can really see them slow down. Now, on the gas, big time into the sand. There's new whoops developing. They're hopping. They're bouncing. Hibbert is the man, though. He just takes the lead. He is so fast in that corner. And again, he went on the outside on Aaron Barr. Made the pass. Through the Valley Devils coming into that left-hander. Barr maintained second. Lindberger in third. And Hanks at freight training in fourth. Looks like Barr's got a problem. He goes down. Lindberger runs into him. Hanks at boots into second. And what a gift. Oh, what a shame for those two young riders. Now, Hagsap has Hibbert in his sights. Can you believe it? From dead last at the start, now he's stalking for first. Back to the Parks Canada. Whoops. Sutherland on the outside. Does he have Mini? A oh, smooth line for Sutherland. He gets Mini, and it looks like Nicky Dunn is moving up on this pack. Nicky Dunn, and also a surprise KTM rider. Really fast in the whoops. These guys are having their work cut out for him this heat. There's a good shot of Joey Sutherland. He comes over the finish line. Let's go check side with Goldie. Pat, your boy Joey is on the gas. Fifth in the first moto. He's running fourth right now. He's doing awesome. Yeah, he's doing really awesome. You know, uh, we've been waiting for this break for about the last four years now, Ryan. And uh, Honda's backed us with whole shot and Fox and Pro Texas Metro. 
We're just doing awesome today. I can't believe how good we're doing. Young Joey Sutherland just loving this Kamloops track as Hag said this made up tons of ground on Hibbert. Right, let's talk about the two-stroke, four-stroke. To me, Hibbert is fast out there, but Hag said this, he's not letting anything go. Well, like I always say, it's the rider and line choice and fitness. There's so much going on. And if you look at this, oh, Hags has stuffed himself overexcited. He can taste first place, takes a soil sample right in the main spectator corner. I was just about to say how smooth Hags has this on this whole track. Here he comes in, loses it for a second, front end swaps out. That's a pretty soft section there, too. You know what I think? I think he took a glimpse at Hibbert and just kind of lost his focus for a millisecond. Probably thought, there's him, there he is, I can catch him. Down he went. This sport, man, you have got to stay focused. I watched him get his hand on his clutch real quick to try and pull it in so that the bike wouldn't stall. Back with Platt, who looks like he's moving up on Brad McLean. So Platt now getting in the mix. Hibbert takes the last lap flag. Right, this has been a crazy race. It's actually been a great race for these young guys. You see Clack there pass McLean for ninth. That'll get him some much needed points. As we've got Hagseth, look at the ground that Rusty Holland's made up after Hagseth's spill. Yeah, well, Hagseth was down for quite a while as we get back to Hibbert, who's on his final approach. Hibbert now takes the checkers on to Kat Suzuki, the biggest win of his career in motocross. Tucker, you have been every single moto. You have been battling really hard. You've been up close. You've had some problems. Finally, you put it all together and put the win. How does it feel? It feels really good. You know, we've had a you know a lot of close calls. This first moto, we were uh, running real good up in third, and um, just had a nasty crash. And last week at Nanaimo, I just first turn pile up and got got mangled up pretty good. So it feels really good to finally get a, a good finish. Checking out the Castro leaderboard, Hibbert has the ride of his life. Hagseth also from dead last. Local boy Sutherland takes fourth. Tiger Lacey makes it back from that first turn crash. Lindberner in eighth, and I love to see Brad McLean in tenth. Brad Hagseth, hard fought second place, man. Tell us about that moto. That was, uh, there were a lot of uh, things going on that moto. I'll tell you, I had a good start, and I think Lacey came inside me and took us both out. And uh, I got up dead last, and I just put my head down and tried to get as many as I could the first lap while they were bunched up. And, and I saw Tucker Hibbert, he was moving through the pack too, and, and uh, I caught up to Rusty Holland, and, and luckily I got around him right away and, and set my sights on Tucker, but then I had a fall at the end. But it was a, it was a great moto, you know, I just, I say a prayer before I go out there, and, and whatever happens, happens. You know, I'm just trying to do my best every time I go out. Hey, I'm standing here with the Russ dog. Russ, lots going on in that moto. You were able to take third. How did you feel out there? Uh, so so. My, my bike's running real good, and uh, Tucker Hibbert got out early. Now Dice when we begin the moto, and uh, man, he's making some uh, ballsy passes out there. But uh, hey, that's what you got to do. You got to go for it. And uh, you know, he wanted it. He got it. Uh, you know, like I said in the interview before, I want to be in them one spot. Best yeah, that's the hottest aftermarket product right now is that whole shot clip. Morgan puts his in place. Dangerous Don now giving the guys a signal. Dangerous looking. Going to five as we head back to the line. Riders focusing down on the gate. The gate drops coming into that first corner. It's a long one, Brian. Who's going to get the whole shot? Looks like we got Snail in the mix. It's Dubé and Lockhart with Lance Snail. Unbelievable. The four strokes are out in front again. Dubé and Lockhart in every single moto. Those are the guys. Man, they swapped it from the first moto. Funneling through here. There's Wall. There's Israel. Hey, Bill Lawrence with a good start. He's a pick. Mike Island looks like he's in the top ten, so good start for him. Why are the four strokes so fast off the start, Brian? Well, I don't know if it's torque timing. We'll see if uh, the two strokes can respond. And the sand also probably has something to do with it, and it is a sand start, not a concrete pad. So four strokes, a slight advantage here. Also, with Smale on the big 450. Definitely. And look at Wah, not wasting any time getting into the mix. He's gotten by Lockhart. Looks like Israel's gotten by Lockhart as well. Smale in second place. Juby now looks like he's starting to run away with the lead. Absolutely. Uh, Smale pulls a tear off, has his foot off the peg for an awfully long time. I think he knows what he's got to do, though. At the start of the race, you've got to push real hard right from the get-go. Coming to the parts, Canada whoops. Wall with that inside line right through the middle. He's bouncing. Does he have the outside line? John Sebastian Wall gets on the gas. You know what, by coming into that right-hander, you got to hit that little step up, and Smale, it, it, he lost time on it. Well, you can see Smale take the whoops way to the inside, trying something new, no doubt, and then he hits that jump in the corner. It's a bit of a split course. Watch for the outside. Just rails around. Comes in a lot harder, makes a pass. Morgan gets by Israel. He's now in six as they work through that rhythm session. That's the rhythm session that Darcy Lance crashed into practice as we get back to the leaders. Wah on the inside. Dubé with a handful of throttle on that four banger. Roost all over the place. Wah's not going to be able to follow that. Brian is going to have to change lines. He goes outside. Dubé with a great inside line. 
Oh, this is awesome racing. Awesome camera work. As you can hear, Dubé on the throttle, that big 450. Just rah, rah. Look at this now. Oh, unfortunately, this does not look good. That was number 904, Brian. That's Jeff McFarlane who went down in that rhythm section. Back to our leaders through the uh, Parts Canada. Whoops. Wall on the inside. All swaps out a little bit. Look at that traction. Once again, we're talking about traction. Dubé's getting it with the force choke. McFarland, he's got a problem here. Oh, this is, does not look good at all. I'm sure the ambulance will be on that. But going back to Juan Dubé, a couple of the most stylish riders on the Canadian circuit. Look at the gap now that Dubé's developed. I think Juan tries something, bobbles, spreads it out, gains it all back up again. In the rhythm section, Dubé's got a problem. He straightens up, but Juan gets through him on the outside. Interesting line, though. We're talking about traction, and then Dubé loses it. Well, Dubé went all sideways. He's there. Get on the gas a bit early. Juan capitalizes. He's always the capitalist. Slow mo Look at this, though. There is the yellow flag there. And it looks like Juan makes the pass under the caution. We'll see if the officials catch that, Mark. Interesting. I didn't even notice that as they were coming around the corner, even though the official's standing right on the track. Yeah, we've got several officials. And there's a rider down right there. So anywhere between the, the yellow and the crash, it's no passing. We'll see how that works out. Interesting. As look at this now. Morgan and Pedersen. Morgan just rails the outside of that corner. He's the only guy taking that line. Looks like Morgan had no way. Pedersen gets on the inside. Right, you want to go outside sometimes. You really got to get on the gas. That time Pedersen had the inside line. Handful of throttle makes it up on Morgan. Great job for Pedersen. As Hagseth is down, look at that. He's got his tear-offs, roll-offs wrapped all around. That's an uncomfortable feeling for Ryan. But he's on the two-stroke there. He got that baby fired up real quick back to the rhythm section. No, Smithill goes down to the whoops again in the Pots Canada. Whoops. Morgan on the inside makes the pass. Pedersen falls back, and Factory Phil is now in the mix. Morgan makes it stick. Now that's allowed because there was no yellow flag visible. You can see the yellow flag waving at the start of the whoops there, but that's totally allowed when a rider gets it. Oh, Morgan goes down in that left hander. Oh, he just catapults himself into the ground. That had to hurt. There must be some sort of a slip spot there, Brock. That's exactly where uh, Barr and Lindbergh went down in the second 125. Okay, back to Pedersen. He's in third. That puts Lawrence in fourth. Look at this, the check off. Lawrence on the inside. He makes his way into third place. You know what defense? Pedersen's got to get out of there. Well, Pedersen looked over, but it was a little a little too late as Factory Phil. Look how tall he is. He just dwarfs the motorcycle. Ryan, we got a rider down here. All I can see is the helmet. I have no idea who that is right now. You're right, though. Factory Phil Lawrence, a very large man on the motorcycle. Very smooth, though. Another tall guy is Israel here in Parts Canada. What? Mesley, though, passes him. These two have been mixing it up, seems, every 250 motor. Mesley is a master in the whoops, and he was right through the middle, which is the roughest part. Ryan, the rider that was down is Dubé. Wow, second place, Dubé is down and out. He's being escorted off by the medical personnel. Factory Phil Lawrence inherits that spot. Second place for that machine Yamaha. Gotta love Factory Phil up in the top three for the first time this season. Back to Morgan and the fish. Morgan checks off, but gets that inside line, and then forces Fisher as he takes the outside line that he knows so well. Well, here's where he dropped the ball with Pedersen, so look, no question, Morgan sticks to the inside. No, he doesn't. He drifts wide because Israel's there, and Fisher actually passes it back. Oh, Fisher on the Coors Light race at Suzuki, knifes it on the inside, and takes Morgan, strange position for Morgan to get past. Oh. Look at this, Jamie Bird is out of the race now. Uh, tragic for that up and cover. Here's a great four-way battle, though. Mesley's lead the pack into the whoops. Morgan does pass Fisher. Finally, and his teammate Israel here sees that the best. See Morgan swap out of there, takes him on the outside. His favorite place to pass again, though. That line of the whoops that's closest to the edge is the fastest line. Wa was taking them now. Morgan makes the pass in there with our leader. Wa as he just sets the throttle down and throws the rules. What a beauty! Well, Wa's got about a 25 second lead now. As we see Fisher and Israel duking it out, these guys crossing over each other. See that? See Fisher take the line away. The track's so wide, though. Israel's got a great choice here on retaliation. Fisher getting on the gas nice and early on that Suzuki Canada 250 RM. Derek Fisher, a fast Canadian, just got to get the mind, body, and bike in unison. I think we have a star on our hands. Back to the whoops. Parts hitting the whoops. Mesley again through the middle. Extremely fast through there, Brian. Mesley's having a great ride as Morgan takes the outside every single time. Let's see if Mesley can learn some lines. I think Mesley gave him the uh, wave by Brian. I think that's a little Honda rules there. I think no, he did. No. Back to the middle with the Honda. I think he did. He's got Fisher all over him. You know, maybe Chuck Mesley was just acknowledging the fact that Morgan was faster because Morgan is just putting on a tear. Mesley, though, also at the ride of his life. Factory Phil in second place. Let's go trackside with Goldie and John Nelson. 
All right, John, you got your man Phil in second place. I know how you hate doing interviews, though. we got to do it. He's riding so awesome right now. Yeah, it's been really good. Um, I figured he'd be up there pretty soon, so I'm pretty happy. Right on. I'm back for you. I don't want to say anything else. I don't want to don't want to. Right on, John. Anything. Thank you very much. I think John Nelson sees a machine podium in the near future. Back to Ontario arch rivals. DeHaan and Mesley coming into the parts. Canada whoops. Looks like DeHaan's got a nice smooth line through the middle. Let's see if he rides the rail. Mesley, though, coming in like a ball on fire. Takes that middle line away and makes the pass. That guy's the whoops master, Brian. Great move for Mesley. The motor's winding down. I'm sure both these guys are starting to get tired. Two-stroke with Mesley. There goes DeHaan. Look, DeHaan. Bike length ahead going into that left-hander. He took that Hibbert outside line. Did you see how rough it was, too? Bouncing all over the place. Back with Lance Mail number eight as he makes a pass on Chad Pedersen. This is a battle right here for 7th, 8th, and 9th. There's Hagseth on Fisher with Israel looking on. Hagseth gets back up after that foot down to the tear-off problem with our leader, John Sebastian Waugh, going on that interesting right-hander. Smooth as silk, right? Oh, he's just biding this time. He's got a huge lead, keeping the wheels straight. There goes Morgan for another spot. That puts him into 4th place. He used the Hibbert outside line in that FMF corner again. Back to the whoops. Here we go. DeHaan and Mesley. Looks like DeHaan not so fast with their bobble. Mesley again through the middle. That's a, this guy will not be denied. That's a mirror image of the previous lap. The Han got, got passed back for Mesley now in a solid six. Back with our leader, number one, John Sebastian Wall on his final approach. Look at this guy. He's all by himself and takes the checkered flag and the clean sweep here in Kamloops. Second 250 more. John Sebastian dominating fashion out here in the sandy heat. Tell us about it. Well, I had all the fans behind me, to be honest. You guys are awesome. I got fans cheering all over the place in the in the back section. People cheering. That's pretty awesome, guys. I don't, the whole team is behind me, and everything's going good for me today. Uh, a few people had some bad luck. I had some luck. And I rode strong. You know, I got, you know, I'm in good shape. My bike's working awesome, so everything is for me. To our Castro leaderboard, second 250 motor results. Of course, Wah wins and gets the clean sweep. Lawrence with an excellent finish in second. Morgan makes it all back for third. Hanks at the ninth and Fisher in tenth. Uh, tell us about your start and how things worked out. There was all kinds of action going on in front of you. Yeah, first moto, I uh, my clutch was slipping a little bit. I ended up mid-pack and ended up going down on the start. So this time I wanted to start a little outside. So just in case I didn't... Uh, get that good of a start, I was able to hold it on and come around. And, and, and that time I started pretty good, maybe sixth or uh, seventh, something like that, and just put my head down and fought. Blair was riding really fast. He passed me twice and uh, crashed twice. So, uh, And then after a halfway point, you know, I had a good lead in second, so I kind of just rode around. Uh, Wall was riding really fast today. He checked out, so uh, I was pretty much riding in second by myself the last half the race. Yeah, baby, John Sebastian Wall feeling good. We're coming back with the Superman. All right, Blair, could you make it any more difficult on yourself out there? Yeah, I had no rear brake either. You've got to be kidding me. Come on. No, both motos just lost it, just faded out. And it's kind of hard in this track to lay inside right to get on and get into. Need a rear brake. You rode like a man absolutely possessed. What was going through your mind out there as you were tearing through lappers? I just wanted to win the race, really. I just, you know, I was up there at a fairly decent start this time, and then I just went down again. So, uh... I don't know, I'm just disappointed in not winning. Brian, word has just come in from head referee Don Davidson that John Sebastian Waugh was fined two positions and five points for passing on the yellow. Yeah, here it is again. You can see Waugh doesn't even acknowledge the yellow. He didn't see it. Dubé did not protest Waugh. It was a judgment call. Look at all the officials right there to witness it. JSR really uh, doesn't have a leg to stand on here. He is guilty. Though JSR's character, his backbone, that was an accident. He did not see that yellow flag. So I think that said, he could be got five positions. They only got him two. All right, let's move into the Castro leaderboard for the 125 class after two or four rounds. Hagseth with a commanding lead, flat in second, Holland in third, and Bogart in tenth after not riding today. Into the 250s, Wa has a commanding lead also. Smale, though, doing a good job, hanging tough in second. Morgan in there, but what about Mesley in the top ten? 